Hello, everybody, and good morning. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I am sitting in front of the Simeon poster today because I had a very unusually stressful time setting to together, uh, putting together today's podcast. So I'm going to speak like this for a little bit to calm down before I flip this whole table over and light it on fire in my apartment. All right. I feel better. I instantly feel better. I hope you guys are doing well. Um, I hope you enjoyed last week's episode. That was a, uh, that was a, a very, very last minute episode. And I want to thank John Larkin for coming on. That's just part of this game, guys. When you guys want to put something together and start running something, I'm sorry, I keep going back to my laptop here quick. I'm just fixing stuff. When you want to start putting some time into things and, and start building something from scratch, you start to realize there's a lot of uh, audibles you have to call. Um, not everybody I invite on the show is as jazzed about coming on my show as I am to have them or to, ho- to even be hosting a show. So I just kind of have to, you know, that's just something you keep in the back of your mind. Like, hey, you know, get the... Get get some backups soon ASAP because, you know, whatever. I keep saying, you know, so that means I got to switch topics. Um, just harping back on that last episode, I hope you guys got a chance, or the fans at least, of, of uh, MMA and UFC. I hope you guys got a chance to watch this past card because it was fucking crazy. Oh, my God. And I'm gutted for Jorge Masvidal. I'm gutted for him. You know what I'm saying? Because that dude, he's got... That was his 50th fight. That was his 50th fight. To see that guy, like, imagine if he became champion. 50 pro MMA fights, all the fights he had in the backyards, like, where he started, plus whatever else, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's a lot of fighting. That's a lot of fighting. That is, like, that's two life, that's two careers for some people. Like, what did Khabib get to? He got to 29-0. and 0. That's almost two Khabib careers. Ten more fights, and that's, you know what I'm saying? So, it's crazy. It's crazy. But uh, it just goes to show, man, uh, Kamaru Usman is just on a completely different level. Like, just a completely different level. Just KOing people. Uh, now, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, we know that he's strong. He's a very, very powerful, strong wrestler who has endurance for days, right? Take you down, wear you out, beat you up on the ground, maybe beat you up on the feet, right, after wearing you out. And then he goes and fights uh, Colby Covington, and they have a kickboxing match, right, that he wins. He ends up finishing him. And then he goes and fights, uh, there might be somebody else in between. I think there's got to be someone else in between. But he fights Masvidal and you know holds him up against the the cage. Not the best performance, but wins right. So in in a way that we expect. That's the old Kamaru, right? He was able to lean on his wrestling and his old style and whatever. Um, and then he fights Gilbert Burns, who we think could probably be one of his toughest tests, and he beats him up on the feet. But he beats him up. You know he he uses his jab, he beats him up, but he takes almost his time, right? It was more um, methodical. Takeo Jorge Masvidal, the way that he did on, on Saturday, oh my God, like I erupted. You can't, you can't help but do it. It happened with, with Rose and, and Zhang, which I'll get to after, but it happened there too. Like, whoa, like it, it never gets any less exciting seeing somebody get K the fuck owed like that. Like it's wild. It is a wild thing, but just a, just a picture, perfect right hand straight down the pipe. Wham, dude. And, and what was crazy is like Masvidal's head is here. He went boom. And his hand is here. Like after fully extended, just beautiful. And he was done. He was done. Just a crazy, crazy shot. And I, and I called it because, once the fight started, um, you got Jorge coming out, uh, doing his thing, moving, kicking the legs, which I assumed he would 
it's a good strategy against a wrestler if you can time leg kicks because uh, that's going to take away a lot of the explosiveness. It's dangerous, but you got to be able to time it because wrestlers are catch kicks. But with this low leg kick, it's you know it's crazy. Um, but yeah, he's he's kind of moving. He's picking his spots. He's beating on um, on Masvidal on uh, on Usman. The first round I thought was close, kind of close. You know what I'm saying? Um, Masvidal definitely came on strong at the end of that round and and gave everyone optimism, especially people like me who kind of wanted him to win. Didn't think he was going to win, but wanted him to win. Um, I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> oh, bless me. Thank you. Um, what was I saying? Yeah. And then, but what, one thing I was noticing was that Usman was throwing straight shots. He was throwing jabs, jab to the body, straight right hands. And the times where I thought he was most vulnerable was when he would start to throw the looping shots. Cause he would, you know, he would kind of get out of position and Jorge would get out of the way. And when Jorge would do that, he would he was gaining confidence. So his hands were down. If you watch that fight again, he's moving back and his hands are just down. Sometimes he's moving back straight because he thinks the the hooks are coming. He thinks he's gonna um, play him out of out of his strategy, if that makes sense. And his confidence is gaining. And I was like, he's got to keep those hands up in these exchanges because it's one thing. If you move back like this on a looping shot and your hands are down, that's one thing. It's still dangerous as fuck, but it's one thing because it makes sense, right? Looping shot, you can back up. Um, but a straight shot, you don't want to back up. You know what I'm saying? Because that's you don't know how long that guy is, especially a guy like Kamaru with long arms, just a big guy for the weight class, power, straight, and throwing those straight shots. It was it was picture perfect. It was phenomenal, and I uh, you know. You want to say you feel bad for some of these guys, but that's the game they play. They wouldn't want you to feel bad for them. So that was a crazy main event. The co-main with Rose and and Zhang, I called Rose winning. Um, I had a good night betting, finally. I won a little bit of money, but I uh, Rose, that was, I I thought she was going to win, but I did not know she was going to kick her in the fucking head. Another insanely perfect shot. And, um, you know, just so spectacular with those long legs. She was able to just take, she took a very subtle step, very subtle step. And uh, Zhang thought it was going to be a body kick or a leg kick. And she moved her her lower body out of the way and she put her hands down. Bong, right on the chin. Oh, my goodness. Crazy, 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 crazy. And then before that, obviously, Valentina, I knew she was going to beat the shit out of Andrage because that that girl's on another level but um you know the way she did it as well dominant dominant got on top of her took her down the whole fight and then just beat her up in a crucifix position one of the worst spots you ever want to be the whole time I'm sitting there I'm like guys look 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 and nobody else that I'm watching it with is as into fighting as I am or into MMA or any of that stuff so I'm like gosh she's gonna go for the crucifix it's gonna be awful watch 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 and she tried and she got denied and then they went back down i'm like look, look, look she's gonna do it again she's gonna do it again and bang she does it and it's just awful um but that was again crazy crazy and then weidman breaks his leg in the same way that you know he broke silva's leg unintentionally obviously uh but that that's that's nuts right because you watch it wrap around we see it we notice it we're like oh like it wrapped around his leg and then but it's almost like we see it but almost nobody notices it because they're like "Hmm, whatever and then even you look at weidman you look at his reaction he's like wham and he puts his foot back and he just terrible 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 you hope he just like kind of goes on you know what i'm saying like recovers and kind of finishes his career you know i mean that's a shitty way to go out but uh sometimes you gotta just i don't know sometimes you might just have to take it like that's he's what's he in his late 30s he had a good run at one point he was champion but i don't know i don't know he might have to step away that's a bad injury to get at that age in a sport like this I mean, Silva was around the same age, and look what happened to him when he came back. He's just, you know what I'm saying? He's been getting his ass beat, you know, more or less. Like, he fought 
he fought Nick Diaz, got pops for something. They both got popped for something. I think Nick Diaz was weed, obviously, but um, Silva might have had some other stuff in there. He won that fight, but it was a no contest, and he was on steroids, possibly. <clears throat> and then he just loses all these other fights. He he got past Derek Brunson. I didn't watch the fight, but supposedly it was controversial. So <clears throat> whatever. I don't I don't mean to do a deep dive on him. It's just it's sucky to see fighters get old in the octagon or in the ring or whatever, um, especially when they suffer an injury like that. Like where you know we'll say civilians, right? Uh, we're more or less normal people. We we look at an injury like that and we're like, Jesus, I'm sitting on my couch. You know what I'm saying? I'm not I'm not going near a ring. I'm not doing nothing. But these guys are hungry. They that's plus it's their job. It's their job. But it, the the uh, the addiction to the high that you get from it from the winning is that's that's what they that's what keeps them there. That's part of what keeps them there. The other part's money because the fight business is awful. But uh, part of it is money as well. Um, but yeah, I think I think that card sh- or that event showed how much effect a an audience can have. I said this when the <clears throat> when they first started doing the shows uh, in front of nobody. Right, no crowd. I, I, I found the toughest way to say that. But when they were doing the shows with no crowd, and they were doing the fights with no crowd, I was like, "Yeah, there's going to be people who, um, who are going to feel comfortable in there because it's quiet, or maybe you know, it, it, they're not in front of uh, you know hundreds of thousands of people, however many people they fill. Thousands, we'll say thousands of people um, in the fans. There, there's no." There's no added pressure, I guess. It's almost like we're in the gym. It's not like that because it is a fight and there's, you know, you're still on TV. You're still in front of a lot of people, but uh, not the immediate, the immediate hit of the crowd and whatever. Um, But I said, yeah, some people will feel more comfortable, but there's going to be less finishes, I think. And I don't know if I was right. Uh, I mean, there were some phenomenal, phenomenal fights, phenomenal cards, and it was a crazy experience watching them in and being able to hear everything that's happening, hearing the corner advice, hearing the the strikes when somebody does get KO'd. But I felt like that comfort led to maybe a little more uh, apprehension or less exciting. Just, you know, plain, plain out there. Maybe it was just a little less exciting. Because for as many people as there are that are nervous about the crowd... There's just as many people who embrace the crowd. And then there's also people who don't give a fuck about it. But there's some people who feed off of that. Like, I feel like a guy like Conor McGregor was hurt by having a small crowd there. It seems like that guy just so happens to go bananas when, you know, there's a lot of energy and there's a big, big hoopla going on. So... That seems to be where a guy like he, he thrives, right? He finished Cowboy in 40 seconds or something, in, uh, and that was in front of a crowd, a big one. And then he fights Dustin and gets finished in front of a small crowd. So maybe a guy like him, he feeds off that shit. And I think that card, there were finishes and just crazy things happening. And, and I remember watching it and being like, wow, any usually when when somebody gets KO'd or something good happens to the crowd, there's a big uproar. Wow. This th- this one, anytime somebody did something and, and that uproar happened, it was way louder than the ones in the past. Like, you could hear the, uh, the announcers or the commentators talking during those uproars. Most of them, not on, not on this Saturday card. Almost never. Anytime something happened, wow. Like crazy, crazy, and then they scream too. It's insane. That uh, that was, you know, I, th- I think it was just a uh, a good example of how a crowd can influence things. Some people feed off that shit. Some people hear it and it's like, yeah, I'm the man in the fucking arena, or the woman, or you know, what other pronouns are there? I'm I'm gonna skip that conversation, but uh, you know what I'm saying? Like like. The, the crowd sometimes it, it drives people to do better, especially for 
having a huge break from it and then now coming back that's why the first the first fight on the card was crazy wasn't it it was it was uh it was the two women and right at the beginning the girl got dropped she the the chinese girl hit her with a right right hand and dropped her and um and then that girl that got dropped ended up winning like uh, beating her ass on the ground or something like that that's the way you kick off a fight card you know, they're the first fight in front of a huge crowd again. That's, well, like, you're going for it, you know? Um, so that was just awesome to see. I'm super excited for those to start coming back. I was uh, thinking of going to a sports event, but I don't want to do it around here. We got to wear masks. We got to be far from each other. Fuck that. I- I'm, I'm good. I'll save my money. I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll just wait. Or I'll go to one down south. Florida, Texas, something like that. Go to a sports event down there because they don't give a fuck, which is cool. You know what I'm saying? Like for a guy like me, I don't, I don't give a fuck. So I, I give a fuck when, uh, or I care, I should say, let's, let's switch the vernacular up. I care, uh, when I'm spending some money to go do, to go have an experience, but the experience has to be altered for one reason or another. This just so happens to be you know, a COVID mandate and and the masks and all this stuff. So I respectfully will not show up. I'll save my money. Sorry, Red Sox. Sorry, Celtics. You're not getting my hard earned cash. Nope. Mm -mm. I'll go see the Houston Astros or uh, the Tampa Bay Bucks, right? The Tampa Bay Bucks, that'd be a good game, right? Go see the Patriots, the Patriots. Go see the Tampa Bay Bucks, who are also the Patriots. Go see Tom Brady is what I meant to say. So, yeah, that was awesome. It's super exciting to see events come back. I can't wait to go to some shit. Mask-free, not caring, right? Sweating on people, sweating on people's drinks, right? You go into a place with a big crowd and people are screaming. That means there's all type of spit in the air and it's falling into your nachos and your popcorn. I love it. That's my favorite. What Are we humans or not? Are we going to be humans or are we going to be these bubble people forever? I don't want to be a bubble person. I don't. I'm going to get it. We're going to be in the summertime, so we're going to have tan lines with, with where our masks are. I already shaved my face, so my tan is gone. But, like, it's going to be even worse, right? When my, I'm going to have nothing here. Fuck that. Fuck that. Fuck that. I'm outside. I'm not wearing no goddamn mask. Unless we're in a big crowd and we're in a line. I understand. And the line's wrapped around the building. I hate lines. I don't stand on lines. But if I just so happen to be in one and we're in a big crowd and whatever, okay, I'll wear a mask, whatever. But if I'm outside on a bike path and people want to say, where's your mask? What are you? Go fuck yourself, please. Just go somewhere. Go somewhere. Go in your house. If you don't want to be outside... If you can't stand to be outside and see people without masks who are also outside, just stay in your fucking house. Do us a favor. Stay in your house and look yourself in the mirror and complain to yourself because you're the only one that's going to listen. All right. Uh, You're not going to badger somebody walking down the street. I always uh, imagine having the the audacity or the gall to just out of nowhere, just call somebody out on, you don't even know them. Where's your mask? What are you doing? You don't work there. You don't do nothing. You're just a citizen. A citizen committing a citizen's arrest, essentially. Like, uh, go, please, please. I, I always, I, that's happened to me a couple times. Um, and I've seen it happen to other people before. And I'm like, imagine that. Imagine just being that person, being that much of a fucking dick. Just in real life, you're telling people, hey, don't do that. You see, what? Do you listen to everything they tell you? You take your vitamins, you do all that shit, right? Do you listen to everything they tell you? Well, then I don't think I want to hear too much more from you, if I'm being honest. You know what I'm saying? You're not skeptical at all. You're not skeptical about anything. You just, hmm, whatever, sure. I'll buy, I'll buy Doge, whatever. Hmm, fine. I'm not skeptical. Perfect segue, right? I've been itching to talk about this. Those of you who follow me on Instagram will see that I love to poke fun at the cryptos. Give me one second. And I'd love to have somebody on here that uh, is more knowledgeable about them than I am. I think I might in the near future, but I digress. Um, Right now, we're living in the generation of the cryptos, the cryptocurrencies. These are hot. 
They're the fad. Everybody's buying into them. Who wouldn't buy into them, right? Who wouldn't buy into them? They're, they're, they're going up at astronomical rates, right? Hundreds of percents. Some of them thousands of percents in very short periods of time. Very, very short periods of time. Who would not just... That's all you need to hear, right? Most people all they do, what, what? What? It went up 100%? I put a dollar in, I'm going to get a dollar back? You kidding me? I'm going to get two dollars. Hell, let's go. Let's get it. Right? Uh, it, it, it seems like a no-brainer, the way people talk about them. I, myself, am very skeptical. Maybe not even very skeptical, because I don't want to sound like some... Uh, young kid who's trying to hold on to the old ways. No, 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 no. Fundamentals are the important thing. If those are what you want to call the old ways, then I suppose, yeah, maybe I do want to hold on to the old ways. But fundamentals are incredibly important. Now, what's going on with these cryptocurrencies is we have very little information on them. There's not a lot of information on them. And when I say information, I'm referring to a couple different things. I'm referring to the complex, uh, the complex technology and systems that it takes to create these coins or mine these coins, right? We can't create them, I guess. I don't know, right? It's, it's, it's weird. Um, the way these, these currencies and these coins are mined... It's unless you're in the industry or you know somebody that does it, uh, I'm sure it's tough to understand for most of us, right? When it comes to stocks and bonds, those are hard to understand, but we have some resources, right? And they're really not that hard to understand because once you learn, you're like, oh, okay, that makes sense. A company gets big enough, wants to make more money, they issue stock. A company gets big enough, wants to make more money, they issue bonds. Bonds are debt, stock is capital, all these things. So we don't have that with cryptos. We don't. Do we, we still, do we know who started Bitcoin? Do we know yet? Like for sure. I've heard there's still nobody who knows. That's just an example. There's probably some that we know. There's probably, we know who the creator of Ethereum is. I don't, but there might be, right? Somebody might know him. But Bitcoin, that's the big one. Nobody knows who, who owns Bitcoin. Also, there's a finite number of these things. So once they're bought and, you know, they're not, they're not very liquid, which is fine. Not all investments need to be liquid. But they can't be issued, right? They can't be any new ones. So that's, that's almost where their uh, advantage comes in. There's an advantage to that because when a company pumps out more stock and issues a new offering, the price is it's going to put downward pressure on the price because the supply has gone up. You have more of something, you can charge less for it, or people are going to pay less for it because there's such an abundance of it. So Bitcoin, it doesn't, doesn't have that problem. Cryptos, they don't have that problem because once they're out, there's a finite number of them. So... The, the confusion on information is the physical information on where these things come from, how they're created, how they're mined. It's, uh, it's shaky, right, for most of us. The next thing that I, I mean when I refer to information is market information. A lot of the market information that these cryptos are getting are, it's hype, and when I say market information, I mean, why are people buying in or why are people selling, right? You can say, all right, the price of potatoes had gone up. So McDonald's is, I don't know, but spending more on potatoes. So I'm going to sell on McDonald's, right? We'll just say that. So because of that market information, all these people selling, that's going to drop the price. So why are all these people buying cryptos? Because it's the thing. It's the fad. It's the trend. It's the trend investment. These trend investments aren't new. It's not like what I'm saying is a new concept. 
You know what I'm saying? They come around every so often. The dot-com bubble, subprime uh, mortgages, right? These type of things. I'm not suggesting that the crypto market is a bubble. It could be. It could be. Uh, And I'll say that I very much think so. But that being said, who knows when it's going to burst? Because the, uh, the housing bubble burst very, it took a very long time for it to go. 2008, 2007 or whatever. They started doing the subprime stuff in the 80s. Maybe even before that. I forget. I watched the big short a while ago. They explain it all in there. Um, forget about my finance degree where we learned about that, that whole crisis. Um, it's the big short that taught me everything I know. But uh, it could be a bubble. It could be a bubble because there is no... Nothing that could change the value on them other than hype and news stories and stuff like that. Because it's not used as a currency, right? It's, it's barely used as a currency. It's not used like any of the other currencies. It's not liquid enough. It's not liquid enough. Right now, they're being traded as, or they're being looked at as commodities, a lot of the cryptos. Because... Again, they're so scarce. You can't, you can't just have them, right? They got to be mine. They got to be whatever. Again, whatever. I, I want to learn, though. I want, I want to hear more about it. But with the knowledge that I have now, I am very skeptical. And then, not to mention the insane growth, the absolute insane growth that is not normal by any means. I don't know if there are people who think it's normal. Because maybe it's just a new thing, the cryptos, they're running amok, whatever. But that shit is very, very, very far from normal. Very far from normal. There's too much noise. We'll call it noise in the information uh, vacuum, we'll call it, uh, or so to speak. The information vacuum that's leading to these cryptos. There's a lot of noise. There's not any... The value is being created from s- pure speculation. So it, it, it's not like a, a company is, is gaining revenue or, or uh, the earnings per share went up or they're giving out a more dividend or a higher dividend yield. It's none of that. It's just it's pure hype. Not Yes, yeah. I, I guess you can say it's, it's mostly hype because people think that it's going to be the future. They think it's going to be far more abundant later on. Um, the argument that I heard was that the, the devaluing of the dollar that's going on, the inflation that's going on, uh, people think they're going to move toward cryptos. I don't know. I don't know about any of that. Um, historically, what happens when the dollar is worth less and uh, people and interest rates kind of change. People will, uh, people will invest in, in safer assets like bonds and they take money out of the market, you know, when the interest rates rise and because eventually, you know, something's going to happen. Some sort of shit's going to hit the fan. Inflation is going to go up. And if that happens, I don't think there's going to be a lot of crypto investing. I can't say there is because, uh, I don't know, at, at the end of the day, you, people want to keep their money safe. You know what I'm saying? And if the dollar is so devalued and interest rates go up, bonds are far more attractive. You know what I'm saying? You get more bang for your buck. You get a, and it's fixed. It's fixed income. You're going to get whatever percentage you get on that. It's not like you'll be in the market. You'll be in the midst of a shaky market, you know? That's why I, exp- I, I talk about these fundamentals. That's why I talk about these things. Because without it, then it's just... Uh, listen, Robin Hood went crazy, right? Robin Hood absolutely went bananas. They let people play on there, and they didn't have the money to back it up, right? They let people do whatever the fuck they want on there. We're offering cryptos. We're offering this. We're offering that. And that's phenomenal. It brought in a lot of... Uh, Everyday people who thought stocks and, and investments were something that they couldn't deal with. It brought a lot of them in, and that's great. It also added a lot of noise to the market. It inflated the market. 
um, and they weren't able to pay out. They weren't able to pay out the people that were on their platform. If that happened, I'm not on Robinhood anymore. If I was on Robinhood when that happened, I'm not on that anymore. I'm not. I don't care about Bitcoin. I don't care about any of that shit. I'm, I'm not. I'm going to a different platform. Sorry. Like, that, it's, it's weird. It's very strange that nobody, not saying that nobody's worried about it, but people aren't worried about it. People think it's just normal that these cryptos are going up thousands and hundreds of percent. It, it's just showing, it's adding a different layer to the market. It's adding a different, I guess, puzzle piece to the market because some of these things, as far as I know, nothing has acted like these. Nothing has acted like these things. These are, are assets, they're securities that are, <clears throat> they're deriving these insane, insane values from where? There's no intrinsic value on these things. You know what I'm saying? They're incredibly volatile. People blame it on the, on the, on the market being new, which could be true. But, you know, it's, it, I'm skeptical. I'm skeptical. To wrap all that, that, everything that I just said, I'm skeptical. I just want people to be safe. I don't want nobody to lose their damn money. Again, money's money. If you're making money on cryptos, keep fucking doing it. Just understand. Keep informing yourself on it. Um, I personally, I don't have any cryptos. I don't have any. I haven't been convinced to where I want to have some. Uh, that being said, if you're making money on it, I don't wish you any ill will. I'm just saying be safe. That's my two cents. Be safe and diversify always, 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 always diversify. That's like the, the number one thing. You're not going to get rich off one thing. You can. You very well can. You very well can. It happens. But it's tough. There's a lot of holding. could take a very long time. And that's fine. That's a bet, though. This is, that's a bet you're making. You got to leverage your bets. You got to hedge your bets. And when you build a portfolio and you diversify different industries, some from the finance, some from healthcare, some from energy, and you balance it out, we got to get some bonds to create a floor for our portfolio. If we get bonds and they're at 3%, we'll at least make, and, and my whole portfolio is shit in the bed, I'll at least make 3%, right? It balances something out. I'll lose, but I won't lose as much. So, that's what it is. Just stay informed um, and whatever. If, if you're going head first into the cryptos, then do it. But stay informed. That's, that's, the most, that's the most important thing. And I try not to give people tips or advice on any of this stuff. I just tell them, hey, whatever you pick, stay informed Make sure you pick it off. Make sure you, your decision is based off of some kind of principles, not just, oh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin's the one, right? That's what everyone's doing. The Bitcoin or the weed stocks, right? Those are the ones, right? Let's do the weed stocks or the energy stocks, right? Because Biden, right? He wants to do the clean energy thing, right? It's not always the case. You got to do a little bit more research than that. The, uh, the technical factors, some will say, tend to outweigh the... Um, the other factors, the social factors and, and the pop culture and all that stuff. And I might have to agree with that because there's hype behind something. It'll sell. You know what I'm saying? It'll sell. Elon Musk bought, what, $1.5 billion, or I'm sorry, Tesla bought $1.5 billion worth of, uh, of Bitcoin. That alone raised the price. But then everybody saw that and was like, whoa, let me get up in there. But that's what raised the price. It wasn't anything else. You feel me? So, and they're smart in doing that because Tesla did that. And now everybody's like, oh, hell yeah. Let's get up in there, you know? So, and it'll give the people that are already in there more hope so they can buy more or whatever the case is. So, uh, just be safe, guys. Be safe. Um, whatever you pick, pick it off some, some uh, I guess, technical factors is the best term. Pick it off, not just, I, f I feel that this is the right thing to do. Sometimes that, that works, but not always. Um, build a portfolio. If you want to make your bets, hedge them. You know what I'm saying? Have your portfolio, and if you want to put X amount of money in 
this stock because you think it's going to boom, then do it because you could be right. But just know if all your money's on that one thing, you could also be wrong. It's the same thing as a bet. Same thing as going to the, to the casino. So if you want to make it more about investing long term, portfolio is the way to go. Diversify, let it build, add to it. And that's it, motherfuckers. Compound. That's, that's like one of the, the wonders of the world. Compound interest. Compound interest. You just keep getting added on. Your money's working for you. You made one. You start with one thousand. You get to fifteen hundred next year, and then that whole time, right? Every month you make, we'll say, a quarter of a percent. Bang! Every month, uh, fifteen twenty-five. I know that's not a quarter of fifteen hundred, but whatever. And then that month, the next month, you get the twenty-five. Uh, the 25th, I'm sorry, the quarter of a percent on, on that 1525. And then it just adds and adds and adds. And that's, that's really what you want to do. Um, but don't listen to me, right? I don't mean to say that's what you want to do. I'm not some, listen here, Sonny, this is what you want to do. You don't want to do any of this other bullshit. Everything works. I learned that from martial arts. Every, everything works. You just got to know when to use it, why you're using it, obviously how to use it. And, uh, and hope that it's the right time. So that's it, guys. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this episode. I hope you guys enjoy the show always. Um, <clears throat> I shouldn't say that because I don't have... I, I don't always enjoy the episodes always. Right? As, as you could tell from the past few episodes, <clears throat> whichever one where I went on a rant about myself not being able to talk well when I'm alone or speak well. But, uh, you know, uh, I hope you guys enjoy the show for the most part. How about that? Because I'm tripping on my words here. I'm trying to wrap this motherfucker up without sounding stupid. So make sure you guys follow me on everything. Uh, links are in the description. Make sure you subscribe to the show wherever you listen. If you're on YouTube, like, comment. Uh, share, also subscribe. Um, am I missing anything? Oh, Obsessive Aggression. Check it out, www.obsessiveaggression.com. And that is it, everybody. I'm going to talk to you all on Thursday. Peace.